So I wanted to create a lightsaber because lightsabers are cool and I figured I could learn a lot by creating one. You can find all the source code and blend files in the git repo linked below. I started where most programming journeys start, the internet, and searched till I found a picture of a hilt that I quite liked. Saved it and hopped into Blender. Blender is pretty much just scaling, extruding, duplicating and deleting things over and over again until it kind of looks like the thing you're trying to create. Nonetheless, it's a pretty useful skill to have as a developer. I can only hope I'll get better at navigating its interface over time. I spent 10 minutes trying to find my lost properties panel whilst recording this. So I'm just gonna fast forward this and turn up my cheesy background music. So once I was done, I exported my model from Blender and imported it into Unity. I like to extract the materials so that you can apply the shaders to them later. I then dragged the model into the hierarchy and unpacked it so I could create my own prefab. I decided this was a good time to create a shader for the basic glow of the blade. I've watched that Bracky's tutorial on creating these glows a hundred times. So pretty much all you do is add a color, add a Fresnel node, add, and then you can make properties out of the things you want. Add a multiply node, multiply the Fresnel with the color, drag it to the emission node and a presto. After creating the shader I just assigned it to the blade material. I'm just gonna rename this prefab to something more reasonable than um, lightsaber latest attempt. So my positioning is all screwed up so I'm just gonna sort that out quickly. Zero everything as much as possible. I just want to parent these to an empty whose scale and position will be zero. It will be much easier to work with.
After messing around with the power of the Fresnel and the intensity of the color, I got to a point where I was pretty happy with the way it looked. I also fiddled around with the intensity of the bloom on the post-processing volume, just to see if we could get the effect to pop a bit more. Okay, so time to start thinking about our procedurally generated trail mesh. Now let me tell you, I thought about this for a long time and I was quite adverse to creating a mesh manually because that just sounds terrifying. So I thought of every other alternative there was. I duplicated this blade over and over again so that it kind of looked like a trail which looked pretty awesome but in reality you could never use that because of how intense it is to keep rendering and deleting objects. I mean, you could probably object pull them, but even still, it's not the best approach and I felt kind of dirty programming it. I scoured YouTube for tutorials on sword trails, and whilst there's some really cool stuff out there, it's not exactly what I was looking for. So in the end, I decided I had to bite the bullet and learn how to procedurally generate a trail mesh. Some light reading and a couple more Brackies tutorials and I was ready to go. And by ready to go I mean ready to draw lots of pictures to try wrap my head around this confusing BS. So the idea I came up with is to track the tip and the base of the blade in each frame. That way we can tell where the tip of the blade is in the current frame and the previous frame as well as where the base of the blade is in the current frame and the previous frame. This should help us to draw some triangles. I just created a basic animation so that I could see what the triangles look like as I program them. Once I was happy with the animation, I created a script and added it to the object. Yay, time to program. So I added a couple of fields just to track the tip and the base objects. Then I just drag them in to assign them. I added an empty game object with the mesh filter and a mesh renderer so that we had something to actually store our mesh data and render it. And then we just need to create a field so that we can actually assign the object. I'm just gonna rename it to something that makes a little more sense. I added fields for the mesh, its vertices and its triangles, which should be arrays, but we'll figure that out. And also um, just a field to track how many frames we should render our trail for, as well as how many vertices we're gonna draw per frame. I then just instantiated the arrays. We can determine the length of the vertices array by multiplying the number of frames that we want to render our trail for by the number of vertices that we want to draw per frame. And the length of the triangles array will just be the length of the vertices array. I then just created a field to track which frame we're on and incremented it each frame. Next I needed a way to keep track of the previous tip and base positions. We can do this by assigning a previous tip position and a previous base position to the current tip position and current base position at the end of each frame. Okay, time to start creating some vertices. 
So we can assign the zeroth vertex to the current base position, the first vertex to the current tip position, and the second vertex to the previous tip position. Then we just assign the triangles to each of these indices, so 0, 1, and 2. Um, assign the vertexes to the current mesh object and the triangles to the current mesh object. Let's hit play and nothing happens. I'm pretty embarrassed to talk about how long it took me to figure out what the problem here was, but basically I hadn't assigned my mesh, I did it the other way around and got the component but didn't actually set the component's current mesh data. Uh, embarrassing. Anyway, once that was fixed, the triangle was drawing but its position was a lot of whack. One of the problems was that I needed to zero out the mesh object's position. Now it was a little bit better, but still quite wonky. And sometimes the triangle just disappeared. I figured this was because we had only drawn one side of it and you need to draw both sides of the triangle if you want it to render. So I just added a condition to check the current frame count versus how many frames we should be rendering for and if we reach the max number of frames that we're going to render for then we just reset the frame counter. Also I just increment the frame count by the number of vertices so that we can keep track of where we are in our vertices and triangles arrays. And then duplicated the vertices and triangles but the vertices this time we drew in a clockwise and then anti-clockwise direction so that we could get both sides of our triangle. Sweet, now that that's done, everything should work without a problem. Okay, not quite. But I was also quite unhappy with my animation because it was snapping back to zero from a different angle, so I just fixed that up quickly so that it would smoothly go back to zero on the rotational axes. After fiddling for a bit, I realized that my issue was that I hadn't initialized the previous tip and previous base positions. Once I fixed that, things started to look much better. Now the only problem was that there were these gaps because we were only drawing the triangle from the two tip positions to the base. So there's this gap that we needed to fill with some more triangles. After hitting play, things still look a bit weird, but we're almost there. The problem this time was that I needed to be drawing the fill-in triangles from the bottom to the top using the previous base and tip positions instead of the current tip position. And cool, now things look much better. Last thing is, we don't want this funny looking pink material, so let's go create a glowy one. I started by pretty much creating the same glow effect that we have on the blade for the trail. I then created a material from our lightsaber trail shader and assigned it to the material of our mesh. As we can see, the material looks a bit weird. It's as if the lighting's not calculated properly on it. So back in our shader, I just get the current position of our lightsaber trail mesh and assign that to the normal value of the PVR master. I 
And cool, things look a bit better. It's distributing the color nicely along the mesh. So now we can just fiddle with the power and intensity and hopefully we get a nice glow. Lastly, I'll just spruce up the animation so that we can show off the trail effect. Yay, and now we have a fancy procedurally generated trail effect. Thanks for watching, I'll catch you on the next one.